up this tower somehow, some way, either a construction accident, maybe wind came, whatever took place, I don't know for sure, but the tower fell. When the tower fell, 18 people were killed. 18 people were crushed. Kind of like the fire that comes out of nowhere and sweeps through Northern California, and 23 people are killed, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's an accident. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a natural disaster. It's a heartbreaking thing, but it happened. So Jesus brings up that example that everyone would have known about. He says, what about the, the Tower of Siloam? When it fell and 18 people were killed. And he raises the same question. Were, were, those, were those 18 people that killed, were they actually worse sinners than everyone else who lives here in Jerusalem? Because if they received that kind of suffering, actually they perished, life was taken. Because that, man, that happened to them. Wow, they, they must be really bad sinners. They must be really unrighteous people. They're not like us. And so they deserve that because of that. And Jesus used another example that can take place in life whether it be an atrocity or an accident or a natural disaster. And he says, listen, that event does not mean that they were great sinners and that God was necessarily bringing that punishment upon them and that suffering upon them because of their sin. But what he pulls out to say in looking at that story that he gives of people is that, once again, everyone has sinned and will perish if they don't likewise repent. What he says here in his own teaching, once again, is identical to the story about the Galileans. Jesus answers, no, no, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Same, same words. No, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Two examples. One brought by the, the crowd. One brought by Jesus. Jesus takes both stories. The atrocity by Pilate, who murdered those worshipers. An accident, natural disaster, unexpected event that took the lives of 18 innocent people that just happened to be there, wrong place, wrong time, if you will, and their lives were taken. God sovereignly is over that somehow, but their lives were taken. And Jesus says, in either case, it's not that they received that because of their sinfulness, Necessarily, God certainly can punish sometimes and use suffering as a means to draw us to him. And Jesus takes one thing that comes out of crises and events to say, you know what? Their life was just taken like that. Their life was just taken like that. Is your life ready? Because you do not know when your life will be taken. I do not know when my life's going to be taken. So am I ready for that to take place? Am I right with God? The question I would raise is, how can I be right with God? How can I make sure I'm in the right standing? It's not by standing on my own merits. You say, well, I'm righteous. I'm holy, I'm good enough to where God would accept me, and so I'll be in the kingdom of God. No, what Jesus says, he puts in there, everybody together. How can you know then you're right before God? Repent. Otherwise, you're going to perish. Repent. Otherwise, you're going to perish. Two times for emphasis. Repeats himself. Repent. Repent. Unless you perish. So what does it mean to perish? Well, we miss it. It's, our, it's not physical death. It couldn't mean that. We're all going to die. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a spiritual reality of an eternal kingdom that God has come to usher in and, and let us get, get, get insight to and understand, right? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 that, that in our sin, we have the wrath of God over us. We are dead in our trespasses and sin, and therefore we have enmity between us and God. The wrath of God rests over us. But then it's a beautiful passage. It then shows that when we accept Christ, when we turn to Christ, right, we become a follower of Jesus and, and we become a part of the kingdom of God, that we are no longer under that wrath. That, that Jesus then, by our faith in him and turning from sin, he, 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 he imputes upon us. He gives us his righteousness. That then we are looked at as holy because of the holiness of Christ, not the holiness of ourselves. So then I can stand before God, you can stand before God someday, and you can be seen as holy, not because of your own merits, but because of the merit of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel of what he does for us. How do we get there? Jesus calls us out to repent. In the opening message of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark, when he began his ministry, his earthly ministry, he says, hey, the kingdom of God is at hand. You know what he said? Repent and believe in the Gospel. Repent and believe in the Gospel. So here we are in the center of his ministry, and it's really an incredible long sermon. He keeps being engaged, trying to point people towards the eternal matters, and they come at him one more time, if you will, uh, maybe in a gracious way, I don't mean that's argumentative, but they come, uh, open another discussion point. He says, listen, we are all, you all need to repent. 
It brings out repentance. Look at the end of his teachings. And I, I'll go to something he said. Well, it's not Jesus' word. Well, they are. He says to his disciples, to go ye therefore in all the nations, you know, baptizing, teaching things that I've commanded you. I'll be with you always. Teaching the things that I've commanded you. What does Jesus command his people to do? To repent. So repentance is part of his early teachings. It's in the heart of his teachings, in his early ministry. It's at the conclusion of his ministry. He, he does not want what? He does not want anyone to perish. There's the love of God, right? There's the compassion of God. There's the grace of God. There's the mercy of God. Therefore, if I am living, if you're here today and you're living and you have not repented and turned your life to Christ, then you have, you have an abundance of mercy staring you in the face today, an abundance of grace staring you in the face today. Because the question to ask is when Christ has come is, well, why did God do that? The question to ask is, why not me? Why was God merciful to me? Why do I get to breathe another day? Oh, what a gracious and merciful God. I do not deserve that because as an offender of God, which is one of the words in the text here, which literally means debtor, I have a debt towards God. And because I'm a sinner, the, the debt that I owe God is my life. The wages of sin is death, right? For all have fallen short of the glory of God. Everyone has sinned according to Romans chapter 3, verse 23. 